So you wanna do a LS swap into your project car, like I got my 30s Ford truck here that I wanna LS swap. Uh, and you wanna do basically the essentials and stuff that you need to get it done. I'm gonna walk you through stuff like I would get and basically break it down into two categories. I'm gonna do kind of like super budget budget and then a more budget one where it's more of just ordering and buying everything. Let's jump right on into it and go through the list of what you're gonna need. So first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is gonna be the engine transmission and harness and stuff like that. Your, your main components, and I recommend just getting all of it together. For the super budget side, the way I normally go about it is I buy a whole vehicle. I buy a lot of vehicles through IAA, which is kind of like another uh, company like Copart. So you can use Copart or IAA. And normally I pay between $1,500 to $2,500 for a whole complete vehicle. So that's gonna be on your super budget side. The reason I put that on the super budget side is most of the time I can part out uh, what's left of the truck. And normally I can come out with the motor and stuff for about zero dollars. But like I said, it's gonna require you to actually find a vehicle and then rip the engine and everything out your side. Now, on the more budget side, a little less work, I'd recommend you scroll Facebook Marketplace for 5.3. Uh, with the harness transmission and everything and like a foil 60 you can pick those up for about fifteen hundred dollars complete off facebook marketplace or something like that okay the next thing you're going to need obviously you're wanting to put it in a vehicle so uh what you're going to need is you're going to need engine mounts to make that vehicle hold an ls because it'd be obviously doing a swap it didn't come with one I'm gonna put some examples up on the screen for each of these items, but uh, yeah, so uh, for LS engine mounts, it's pretty much gonna be the same for both categories. Normally they'll run between 50 to 150 dollars. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need, obviously, is once you get the mounts and everything to start setting the stuff in there, you're gonna need an engine harness. Super budget friendly size, gonna require more work to just use the factory harness. You can break, you can break it down or you can leave it alone and you'll just have the extra wires but uh, you should be able to do that pretty much for free. You want a little less work and a more clean look. Uh, for both of these, honestly, I'd recommend go ahead and just get a standalone harness. Uh, so these normally range between $150 to $200 for a cheap Amazon one. Uh, just make sure you get one that's got good star rating and reviews. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a trans mount or cross member to fit the Foil 60 Foil 80. Super budget side, uh, if you haven't seen my recent video, I just made one for the Silverado, a tubular trans cross member. And it cost me, I wanna say about $25, $30 just for the materials. So super budget side, you can just make your own. Now, if you're not good with a welder or don't have access to one, purchase side, you're probably looking at $50 to $150, uh, depending on what you're putting it in. You'd have to budget for that on that side for having to order one. Next thing you're gonna need, obviously, is the ECM, PCM, and programming to get it to work. The motor's not gonna run without a brain controlling it. Honestly, for both sides, I'd just go ahead and use the factory ECU. There's no reason to really go holly unless you're going crazy with boost or something. Now, I'd recommend you go ahead, pick up HP tuners. It takes two credits normally to tune these LS engines. So you're looking at about $500 to go ahead and get your MPVI plug-in and uh, go ahead and start learning the tune. Uh, learning the tune on a naturally aspirated build and stuff like that, it's a good place to start learning the tune and it'll save you a lot of money down the road too if you just go ahead and learn. And these are good learning platforms on these Gen 3 LSs. Next thing you're also gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go ahead and upgrade your fuel system. Uh, so super budget side on this, uh, I'm a big fan of Evil Energy's products. Evil Energy has a full like uh, fuel line LS swap kit. It comes with the Corvette fuel filter uh, regulator combo for the so it gets that makes it pretty easy. Uh, it comes with like 25 feet of AN6 lines, and it comes with all your like fittings and everything to adapt it to the fuel rails and all that. And it normally runs about 130. $130, $140 dollars for that. Now on the little bit higher end side, I recommend just go ahead and get you a nice fuel filter and uh, 
fuel pressure regulator and stuff like that and go ahead and order your AEN lines. Again, you can get this from Evil Energy. Just go that route and just have a nice fuel system out the gate. That way you can grow into it later and just do it once and be done. Now, also for both of these categories, I'd recommend go ahead and grab you a fuel pump. I like the Deechworks products, so this is another one for both of them. You can go with a smaller, like 215 liter per hour pump, but while you're in there, pumps aren't super expensive. Go ahead, throw you in like a Deechworks 400 or something like that, 415. And I think normally they run about $200. So I throw that both categories. Just go ahead and put you a good pump in there that, and you can grow into it. Now the next thing you wanna do is obviously you gotta run your exhaust in the new chassis. So on the super budget side, you can use the stock exhaust manifolds. They can only fit in a lot of situations. If you bought an entire truck, like I said before, uh, 2500 HDs and stuff, if you got those for the 604L80, they have three inch exhaust tubing. You can actually reuse, you might have to cut and weld and stuff, but reuse that exhaust tubing and stuff to run it further back. So you, you'd almost be into the exhaust free other than maybe a muffler or something. Uh, but uh, we'll say free just for your basic exhaust to get it fired up and running. Again, this would be one I'd recommend to just kind of move over to your super budget side. But go ahead, get you, I'd go ahead and get you a good set of LS swap headers or something. Normally they run between three to five hundred dollars for LS swap headers. You still have to get your exhaust tubing and stuff done. I'd probably say it shouldn't spend more than about three or four hundred dollars to finish up the rest of the exhaust. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need this for both sides uh, is you're probably gonna need to modify your drive shaft. Now this can vary a little bit depending if you just need to lengthen or shorten one or if you need to completely have one built. We'll say in general, you're gonna spend about 300 to $400 on a drive shaft. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna say is probably gonna just be a miscellaneous. Uh, like I say, I can't cover every vehicle y'all are going into. I'd put $1,000 in each one for miscellaneous. That's gonna cover like your fluids and changing out the spark plugs, just a little maintenance stuff like that. But also uh, like putting together a cooling system. If the vehicle already had like a small block Chevy or something, you probably reused a radiator and stuff or have it or had it should be plenty well big enough to keep it cool but again if you have something like a little Mazda Miata or something with a small radiator you'd have to upgrade that more than likely so we'll just throw all that uh, into kind of a miscellaneous tab and that's also like throttle cable and stuff like that or if you do the drive-by wire route and you bought a whole vehicle I mean you can pull the pedal and all that stuff out the vehicle donor vehicle and that, that that's really why I like buying whole entire vehicles because a lot of this little stuff that will start add up you can pull off the donor vehicle and most of the time use it. That's why me personally, I like to go to donor vehicle route. Like I said, go IA or Copart or even Facebook Marketplace and find one that's maybe hit a deer or something like that and pull it out. But yeah, so that's gonna be pretty much the totals here for how much it costs you to put one together. Like I said, I, I've done several to where I don't have hardly much into it by the time I parted out donor vehicles. And again, that's why I like going that route myself. Okay guys, so that pretty much is gonna wrap it up. So go on ahead, get out there, get to work on your project, get your LS in there, start burning some rubber and hauling ass. And uh, guys, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, and I will see y'all in the next video.